Selkirk. We've been here since uh, 1882. We're a complete community, so we're sort of the urban hub uh, of a, a regional district of about 35,000 people. So we provide most of the commercial and recreation and the cultural services for the region. Climate change has been a big focus of the city. Uh, we've already had a mitigation plan um, established with the city. And so moving into adaptation, we're looking at how we can start to manage the climate change that's inevitable. I mean, it's interesting as I go to cities and towns across the country, that you really are on the front lines, right? If there's a flood, uh, if there's extreme heat, um, you're the ones who have to address it immediately. You see it already in heat waves and intense storm events. Sure, the provinces and the feds might come after the fact, but it's the, it's the municipalities that have to respond right away. I think municipalities are right at the cusp and they're the ones that are really gonna make the, the biggest difference in whether Canada is a nation prepared to adapt to climate change. We got involved in the CAMIN program under FCM, the only one in Manitoba and the smallest one uh, to, to participate. And looking at how you can use asset management to better adapt your community and be prepared for, for the impacts of climate change. We reached out to the Park Climate Centre just because, well, frankly, there's a lot of data out there um, that was available to us, but none of us are, are climate specialists. None of us have the skill set to really understand what that meant for us. You know, if we're going to do this right, we need to bring the experts in and, and really help us understand that. In our approach at the Prairie Climate Center, we like to kind of mash together climate science with that local community expertise. That's actually probably a hallmark of our organization is we actually do that in a very systematic way. For the past 10 years, we've been interacting with communities and, and this idea of local knowledge, actually consulting and talking to people and, and hearing about those stories of environmental impact, but also communities making change. So we made this thing called the Climate Atlas of Canada. This is a fully interactive map of Canada. You can go anywhere you want. You can zoom in and out. Let's zoom into Selkirk. This is the projected change in number of plus 30 degrees Celsius days in a, in, in a given year. We're currently looking at the 2051 to 2080 time period. An increase of 33 days, uh, a whole month basically, of plus 30 degree weather. We think in seasons here in the city and municipal sector, you know, we provide different services throughout the seasons and the way we operate the system, the infrastructure, the way we maintain it changes from season to season. So we asked you to come to us with that approach. So what does this mean for a summer? What does this mean for spring? What does this mean for winter? We wanted information that was very specific to Selkirk. We wanted to understand uh, intuitively what, what climate change was going to mean for us. We didn't just have a small group of individuals in management positions participating in these workshops, but we had frontline staff who have worked with the city of Selkirk for many, many years who might recognize things that managers might not notice. So higher costs for electricity to run air conditioning. Right. Power consumption. Just yeah. greater demand on the buildings yeah. and the systems. They know exactly what's happening in the system elsewhere, just based on experience, right? So uh, to ignore that and to go off of just purely technical engineer drawings or, or technical information, we're missing the truth. So if we're not bringing that practical knowledge, uh, we're just missing the boat, no pun intended. So it seemed like a lot of people agreed that basement flooding and overland flooding were a sort of top concern. What that allowed us to do is engage those, those staff people who live that every day to adapt, adjust to the expected consequences. Do design standards need to change for amount of permeable pavement on a lot? Does that need to be altered because of excessive rain events? Uh, does the design standard for the uh, retention of water need to change on a subdivision? The way we're doing it differently is using that asset management lens. We're not thinking about four years, we're thinking about 20 years, 50 years, and 100 years. Having a plan, having systems in place that allow us to make changes incrementally and, and, and improve so we can actually see the improvements happening, that gives people back their agency. They can say, well, you know, I can, I can deal with this. It's, it's amazing because it's just actually, in some ways, it's a risk management exercise. And if you don't do it, it actually is just really bad planning. But it's, it's also great to see you're doing this and thinking longer term. Because in politics, you are often stuck. Okay, how do I get elected in the next election? And if that's fair enough, I'm a politician too. You have to get elected. But it's 
We're talking further down the road and, and I like the fact that you're thinking about systems change. You're the ones who have to address it immediately and so actually having this built in and thinking about this so it isn't one day you're like, oh wait, we've gone from very few really hot days to a lot and we're not ready. We don't have the systems in place to support people and there's concerns about people's lives or the flooding and how it affects you know, your sewage system. When people look at locating to a community, yeah. they're not only looking at uh, a, a subdivision or how many bathrooms in a house anymore. What they're looking at, this is what they're looking at. They're looking at the infrastructure, the strong infrastructure yeah. in a community, and they're looking at how this community is looking to the future. Okay. And they're taking that to heart, and that's what we're doing here. Municipalities deal with all kinds of crazy things every day. This is just one of those things that we're gonna to have to address. And guess what? You don't get a choice to whether you're gonna address or not. You're either gonna to start today or you're gonna do it in 20 years, or you're gonna do it in 50 years. It's gonna cost you a hell of a lot more later and you're gonna have a whole lot more risk to your citizens. So it's, it's, um, it's negligent not to start today. You know, it's the uh, spring of 2019. Uh, we're about to approve the adaptation strategy. This plan that we've developed is, uh, is a plan that um, makes sense. It works into our existing budget. It doesn't uh, create a huge economic burden on our citizens. Um, and, but it, at the same time, it uh, allows us to strategically consider when we do make uh, changes, uh, where to make those and how to make them the best way. So, I have complete support of this and will be voting to approve it. Thank you, Councilor Murphy. Uh, we had some very good discussion on this, and now it's time to show you we mean business. As a call to question, all those in favor? That's passed. Thank you very much. It was about developing a process that other municipalities could follow, right? So, how do we make it something that other people can use as, as a template for, for building their own plans?